Chapter 10. All Grown Up. Helen was asked to give a public speech. Helen gave her first speech in Montclair, New Jersey. Annie was with her. Still, Helen was scared. What if no one understood her? Helen spoke about her life. Her voice was not clear, but no one seemed to care. The audience loved her. Helen was asked to give more speeches. So Helen and Annie went on a lecture tour. They toured different cities in the United States in 1913. She spoke about her life and her feelings and how she accomplished what she did. Annie introduced Helen and then spoke again at the end. Warm and heartfelt applause greeted Helen wherever she went. Helen was so successful on stage that some people invited her to make a movie about her life and her feelings. Helen and Annie went to Hollywood and made the silent film Deliverance. Annie and Helen dreamed of the money they'd make from the film. They hoped to become rich and famous like movie stars, but the movie was not a success. Disappointed, Helen and Annie returned to Rentham, and now they had a new problem. Annie's eyesight was failing, and Annie and John had separated. Annie was hurt over the failure of her marriage, and she feared she would go blind. The two rested. Helen answered the many letters that she received. Helen was famous, but they were broke. Helen had to think of a way to earn money. Then an offer came. New York vaudeville agents met with Helen and Annie. Vaudeville was a stage show made up of a series of different acts. The agents discussed whether the two women might do a 20-minute act about Helen and her teacher. Annie and Helen's friends did not like the idea. Helen's mother hated the idea. People would come just to see a blind and deaf woman. But Helen didn't care. She thought that it would be fun. And as always, once Helen decided to do something, there was no changing her mind. The first performance was on February 24th, 1920, at the Palace Theater in New York City. Teacher opened the act. In her Irish brogue, she told how she had first taught Helen. Music then filled the theater. Helen parted the curtains and walked on stage. Then they told of the miracle, the day when Annie spelled the word water and Helen realized what it meant. At the end of their act, the audience exploded with applause. Helen had charmed them completely. Soon, Helen and Annie were among the highest paid performers. They earned up to $2,500 per week. Annie began to worry that people came to see if Helen would fall off the stage or make some other mistake. Maybe some did, but most did not. They came because they admired Helen, and Helen loved vaudeville. She liked talking to the other performers. She loved the smells backstage. In 1924, Helen started a new job, one that was to last the rest of her life. The American Foundation for the Blind asked Helen to work for them. She would meet people, talk about the blind, and raise funds. Helen accepted. She felt that there was a way to help the blind everywhere. And so, Helen became the ambassador for the blind. She met kings, queens, and presidents. Annie went with her. In 1925, Helen took a year off to write another book. Helen had been asked to write about the most recent years of her life. She wrote about her last years at Radcliffe, the foundation for the blind, and the people in her life. In 1929, Midstream was published. It, too, became a bestseller. 1929 was also the year that the stock market crashed. The Great Depression began. Millions of people in the United States lost their jobs and their money. Annie became ill. Her sight grew worse and worse. Later, she lost her sight. Helen's heart broke for her teacher. She made sure that teacher was well taken care of. A secretary named Polly Thompson began to fill in for Annie. Then, in 1936, Annie Sullivan died. For nearly 50 years, Teacher had been the center of Helen's life. Could Helen live without her? 
many people thought Helen would collapse or fade away. But she didn't. In her heart, Helen knew that she had to go on. She could not retreat from the world. Teacher would never have wanted that. So Helen kept on working with just Polly's help. Helen continued to speak for the Foundation. She met with President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who had polio. He had braces on his legs and used a wheelchair. The two proved that people could overcome severe handicaps and achieve great things. Helen worked up to pass laws to help the blind. The blind would receive money for school and job training. Funds were given to make talking books available in public libraries. These laws helped the blind live independently. Helen toured Japan in the late 1930s. The Japanese people knew of Helen Keller, but many did not believe the stories about her. In Japan, the blind were treated very poorly. They received little schooling or help from the government. Helen's tour changed that. Knowing that Helen loved dogs, the Japanese people gave her a beautiful Akita dog. The gift showed how much they respected her. Helen then returned home. Franklin Delano Roosevelt Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the 32nd President of the United States. When he was 39 years old, he came down with polio. He was never able to walk again without the aid of leg braces and crutches. But his handicap did not stop him from being one of the greatest presidents. He took office during the Great Depression and started many government programs that put jobless people back to work. He also led the country during the Second World War. Through his radio appearances, known as Fireside Chats, President Roosevelt gave hope to Americans in times of great peril and uncertainty. He died in 1945, near the end of World War II. He was elected four times and served longer than any other president. After World War II ended in 1945, Helen traveled all over the world once more. She met with blind soldiers. Helen inspired them. She gave them hope. Helen continued to speak out for the handicapped for the rest of her life. She met with every president, from Grover Cleveland to John F. Kennedy. In 1955, Helen published another book, Teacher, and Sullivan Macy. It was about the life of the person who had, in many ways, given Helen her life. On Broadway, a play called The Miracle Worker opened in 1959. It, too, told the story of young Helen and Teacher. Later, the play was made into a popular movie. Helen died on June 1, 1968. She was nearly 88. She had inspired millions. Her story continues to inspire us today.